northern money helped fuel slavery, and all of our founding fathers were pretty much okay with it. Even John Hancock, one of the richest man in Boston, one of the great northern leaders, owned slaves in his house. He had slaves. But John Adams was against slavery, so when he wrote the Massachusetts Constitution, it started very much the way that other historical documents have started. Article 1 talks about how free we are and how we have the right to be free, all men are created equal, stuff like that. Now the problem is, when all of our when all of our other founding fathers said all men are created equal, they all knew that they really didn't mean all of them. They meant all men are created equal except for the ones we own. But John Adams really did mean all men are created equal. And he wrote the Massachusetts Constitution in a way that he wasn't trying to cover it up. He defined freedom very broadly. And the reason why this is important is because a year after he wrote the Constitution, a slave in western Massachusetts named Mum Bet, who could not read or write, heard her master talking about the new Massachusetts Constitution, and just the way he was talking about it, she thought to herself, you know, it sounds like to me Massachusetts accidentally abolished slavery in their Constitution. So she got a lawyer and said, do you think I have a case? And he said, you know what, it might work. So this lawyer, on her behalf, sued the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for her freedom under the new Constitution, and she won. And that lawsuit effectively abolished slavery in Massachusetts in 1785. So Massachusetts was the first state in the Union to abolish slavery in 1785. That golden dome you see there is 23 karat gold leaf, uh, which is very expensive but very pretty. And so pretty things are worth it, right? So originally it was just a wooden dome that would leak every time it rained. So in order to stop the rain, we had one of our favorite local businessmen, a man named Paul Revere, cover the dome in copper for us because he was the only man in the country who could make a sheet of copper without losing money on it. Paul Revere came up with a lot of industrial methods that predated the Industrial Revolution that then the Industrial Revolution got credit for about 20 years later. So he was actually an extremely innovative man. But the problem was the rain didn't stop and by the 1870s, all that copper had turned green, very good. So, in 1874, the state house looked like a big chunk of moldy bread. And the people of Massachusetts said, you know what's prettier than mold? Gold! So, in 1874, we covered it in gold, and that is how it has looked ever since. Now, at the very, very top of the Massachusetts state house, you see what looks like a pineapple in an egg cup. Which makes no sense, because we are not tropical enough for pineapples, and I don't know anyone who still uses an egg cup. So, what is that? That is actually, my friends, our golden pine cone. And the golden pine cone is an homage to the largest district of Massachusetts in 1798. So this district was about 80% of the land mass of Massachusetts in 1798. And their symbol was the pine cone. Does anyone know what that district is called? It was called the District of Maine. Do you guys know how Michigan is a state with two parts? There's Michigan and then there's the UP that kind of just hangs over it. That's what Massachusetts used to look like. Massachusetts, Massachusetts and Maine. And that whole thing was called Massachusetts. Over 200 years, Massachusetts bordered Canada. So, in 1820, a little territory called Missouri, told you I was gonna get it in there. In 1820, Missouri territory said, hey, we wanna join the Union, but we wanna join as a slave state. And the rest of the country goes, we don't want slavery expanding out west. No, we're not comfortable with that. So, we come up with the Missouri Compromise of 1820, which says, Missouri, you can join the Union as a slave state if we make up a free state somewhere else to keep the balance of power in the Senate. So that there's one slave state, one free state. So we take the part of Massachusetts we had been ignoring for 200 years, and we made up the state of Maine. Which means, my friends, that the symbol at the very top of the Massachusetts State House has not been part of Massachusetts for 195 years. So I think it's time to update it. And that's coming from the guy who dresses like this for me. I think it's okay to update that. That would be like the Virginia State House having a symbol of West Virginia on top. No sense. No sense at all. So from here, my friends, we're actually going to head to the Park Street Church and from there into the Granary Burying Grounds. So tell you what, my remember, ask questions at any point.